So, I heard you're looking for a go-to source for entertainment. Wait for it? Gaming? Wait for it? Anime? Plus Ultra! Mr. Eric Almighty and Phil the Filipino? Yeah, they've got you covered. And all you gotta do is... Wait for it. This is the Wait For It Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Wait For It Podcast. I am your co-host, Phil Smith, a.k.a. Phil the Filipino. And joining me, as always, is your other co-host, Mr. Eric Almighty. And Eric, we are here with the February edition of Creator Spotlight. As this series keeps on rolling, we continue to have uh, just so much fun doing this. And this month is going to be no exception as we bring in two guests, uh, two local guests that we have crossed paths with and, um, you know, share a an affinity for um, just this community that we continue to build here in Duval County and, you know, outside of that. So super excited to have them and uh, have this conversation here this evening. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Obviously, with this particular series, it's allowed us to kind of venture out into conversations with people that we have similar interests with, just things that align, and sometimes they're in the vicinity of us. Phil, we've been doing conventions now for a couple of years at this point, and it always seemed like we almost crossed paths with this group. So I was very excited at Nakamakan to have the opportunity to finally link up officially and get this set up and scheduled with the Limit Breakers, who you may know if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, obviously very, very big into the convention scene and a lot of events that are happening locally. So you've probably seen them pop up on our stories. I know we are big fans, Phil, but I'd like our audience to get to know two of the members for the Limit Breakers. Thank you both for being here tonight. How are you both doing and are you ready to talk about some pop culture games and beyond? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks so much for, for having us on the podcast. I'm stoked. Absolutely. So why don't we have you both introduce yourself, whoever would like to go first. I'd like our audience to get to know you individually and let us know a little bit about the Limit Breakers, maybe starting off where how uh, like starting off on how both of you guys got into this. Sure. Hi, I'm Jisoo and I'm the band leader of the Limit Breakers. Uh, I also play trumpet. And uh, I'm Danny. I am the guitarist and uh, primary, kind of primary arranger nowadays. And I um, assistant band leader, help run stuff. So uh, ahead, I guess as far as like how the Limit Breakers started, um, this kind of started back in 2020 um, when the pandemic was like in the throes of it. And we were searching for a way to connect with each other musically while, you know, we were isolated. And so I came up with, <laughs> I guess, this idea for a virtual group uh, initially uh, where people could record musical, uh, their, their instruments and send me the takes and we would mix it together and basically have it like the band is in the same room together. Um, then uh, basically, like uh, April of 2020, we get uh, the very first project, uh, Those Who Fight, out. And then kind of from there, we just evolved into a live group um, around a couple years ago is when we, we started doing live music. Right. And uh, I came in <clears throat> as the band was still you know, transitioning to a full-time live group. Uh, so I joined a little bit over a year ago as the bass player and um, ended up taking over guitar duties because one of our founding members, um, he actually moved up to Connecticut um, for his family. So uh, I took over guitar duties from there and we've just been playing a ton of shows and writing a ton of music. So we've been having a great time. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think it's really, really interesting 
what both you and the rest of the group does when it comes to the Limit Breakers. Just the performance in general is always really exciting. You don't see enough of that, I think, in the convention scene, in the nerd scene, wherever you may be. You guys obviously uh, all together were at Nakama, which is like our favorite place. So anytime we get to plug them, we're happy to do so. But you guys tore the right now. (laughs) And thirsty. (laughs) And thirsty, yeah. I think it's really, uh, really great. Phil, what has been uh, obviously your exposure to the Limit Breakers? I know it's been from afar. Um, You know, what what have you kind of seen from afar and what questions do you want to ask? Yeah, I mean, well, first off, again, it's just such a cool way to connect with people. It's it's interesting that y'all had first connected through the pandemic. And, you know, a lot of us did that through through gaming and through like watch parties and then like it doesn't even cross my mind that you could also obviously you know do that through music which is just so cool and again um kind of crossing paths throughout the convention scene is is always great and and while we love like you know the the convention dj shout out to our friend awesomest prime who does a fantastic job uh, also at nakama and other conventions but it's just so cool to see something different and i was bummed i didn't get to hang out with you guys at uh, nakama con hopefully this year i'll get to do so i had to go to disney world last year for my daughter's birthday uh, i told her i will not be doing that again this year so hopefully i'll be able to go to nakama con this year um but you know as as far as um getting yourselves out there and finding yourselves with these convention appearances how did y'all go about that jisoon i'll throw it to you how did you go about kind of establishing those relationships as i know a lot of people that listen to these want to do stuff with conventions now whether it's music or what we do what's something that or how did you go about establishing that relationship yeah so i basically just kind of shot out a lot of filler emails to the various organizations i started with ancient city con uh heard right back from max michaels he was very interested in bringing us on. And uh, so a couple years ago was our very first Ancient City Con that we played for. We also played for them last year. So we were kind of just like slowly building our con relations that way. Reached out to Bold Matsuri, got in with uh, Jason Huckleberry. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've just kind of been slowly spreading our influence, so to speak. Um, and we also belong to this community called the Video Game Music Community. Um, and it's, it's a wider community, uh, lots of conventions outside of Florida. Um, the biggest one being uh, Music and Games Festival in Maryland, um, and then Video Game Music Convention uh, or VGM Con um, are just some of the big ones that we participate in uh, and have played uh, at, um, well, at least I've played at MAGFest as a guest, but uh, hopefully the band will, will get in there. Um, so yeah, we just kind of just started uh, sending out emails, like talking to people, just spreading it out as much as possible. Um, playing at Underbelly 1904, and yeah, we just kind of eventually found our way uh, playing with Mega Ran recently uh, this past January. So it's it's been a wild ride. Yeah, I think people underestimate just the power of an email. Like that's how we've gotten some of our. Uh, some of our guests on Eric is just shoot them an email if they've got one in their Instagram or on their Twitter. It means they want to be contacted. You know, like I, it, it just goes such a very long way. Danny, I want to ask you because as we were talking about in the pre-show, you know, we have we've been through the, um, you know, that that corporate grind. And while Eric and I are still kind of stuck in there as we try to, you know, maneuver our way out, unfortunately, uh, oh, what was it? I know, <laughs> literally like. <laughs> Like crawling don't, through. Like, don't worry, I still got a day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's tough. <laughs> yeah how how is how is it like finding that thing? You know, uh, I, I know you used to do a. Uh, it was a like a D and D style um, like fitness routine. I think that you had done yeah. whenever we first had met, and then now you have this. Like, how awesome has it been to just find these outlets as we you know as we we need those escapes from you know the daily nine to five. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I you know have always kind of had music as a as like a side gig as something to do right uh because um i'm always kind of writing stuff always got something in my head so uh i originally played in a band on the local circuit called nameless guardian and we ended up uh our biggest show ended up being the the big ticket uh which is like the welcome to rockville 
in the winter <laughs> the big festival it, like a core memory is like playing at the same time as bush was on the main stage and like in between songs i heard like machine head kick on and i was like dude this is surreal <laughs> like it's crazy playing on a stage next to them um if you time that right bush opened for you yeah, if technically. You, if you time it correctly. <laughs> um, Machine Head actually led into one of our songs, so it was actually there pretty you cool. go. That pretty counts. rad. Um, <laughs> but uh, after a while, I decided to go back to college and stuff, and that took up a lot of my my free time. And that's when I, you know, because I couldn't just have a job. That's when I developed Crit Fit or Critical Fit, which is uh, the D and D fitness program that I, the company that I own, also. Um, and uh, from there, you know, as pandemic affected that greatly, uh, became difficult to hold in-person meetups for fitness and stuff. And so I hadn't done much musically in a while. And uh, Jisoon had uh, emailed me, uh, Facebook messaged me, matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, it was Facebook Messenger. <laughs> yeah, um, because she was asking around and uh, everybody kind of knows something, somebody around here. And they had initially asked, which is another funny story, um, my buddy Jake Cadmus who um you know to play bass and he wasn't available at the time so he said hey you know it'd be great is uh danny um so i ended up getting the gig that way and it's been a great way to and jake's actually now in the band (laughs) he ended up playing bass with us (laughs) but um it's been a great way to spend my free time and it kind of it gives me something to look forward to on those difficult days when, you know, corporate stuff has you pulling your hair out and, you know, you're, you got a headache, you feel tired and miserable, but I can open up some music editing software. I can talk to G soon about uh, plans for records and, and shows and, and do that kind of stuff. And it brings me a lot of joy and it, it helps keep a lot of that stuff like bearable. Do y'all, I I was telling Eric this last year too, I think from like, because we do Bold Match Siri, when is that Eric, September or October? Uh, Uh, June or July. Yeah, what am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of Ocala Comic Con. It's a good thing when we go to enough that you forget the dates. That's a a good sign. I think Ocala Comic Con is the last one we do every year, which is like September, October. And we have that lull from like November to the beginning, middle of February, where I'm just like, God, I wish I had a convention to work or to do. Like, do y'all get that? Like, just where I'm sure, I mean, you guys are, you know, you're having some, uh, I'm not sure the consistency of of the gigs that you're having, but like, I'm just waiting for the, uh, that that lull to end and to get to the next convention to work. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we had, um, we had shows in uh, August, September, uh twice in october and then we had nakama con which was in early november and then you know and then you start getting into uh what are generally live event slow periods which is the holidays um so thanksgiving and christmas are traditionally incredibly slow uh live Mm -hmm. event periods so what we kind of prepped for that in like july (laughs) and we were like hey over this time we're gonna try to um, take it, take that step back, write some music, figure out what our best next steps were. So that's kind of how we just kept the fire lit, so to speak. It's not necessarily being able to play shows, but also uh, getting ourselves out on the right foot. And that's actually when the Mega Ran um, collaboration uh, came to fruition was, uh, you know, he had contacted us and asked him to open for him in January. So that gave us a lot to do, especially Jisoon. She was the primary uh, arranger for like uh, a lot of the the things on, on that performance, because uh, taking a primarily like beat focused hip hop album and getting a seven piece rock band with horns uh, to play Mega Ran stuff is it's, it's an undertaking, but why don't you talk about that a little bit, Jay? Yeah, sure. Um, So Rand hits me up like um, like early December or mid December ish. Um, And basically uh, is like, hey, feel free to turn this down. Um, But I have this wacky idea. I've always wanted to play black material with a live band with horns. Like, can y'all do it? And I was like, uh yes <laughs> so we uh we we made it happen um i had to basically uh within like three weeks get like seven tracks 
arranged. Some of them, actually, I, I arranged more because we ended up not using some of those tracks on the, the show. So I, I arranged something close to like 10 or 13 tracks um, where we only used like seven of them. Um, so yeah, it was it was pretty wild. And, and then we had to record a, one of our rehearsals to send to him so he knew like we were what the quality was and where we were coming from. So it was it was um <laughs> it was a wild undertaking. But yeah, we uh we made it work and he he was very pleased and so we uh we were obviously very pleased too uh when we got through the show and it was a wonderful experience. I think it always feels good to feel that way at the end of it, right? Like when you're at the end of it, you like to have that feeling and it's easy to kind of go through, you know, there's a grind of slowness sometimes, but there's also a grind where you're constantly busy. So the fact that you get to do something that you love helps a lot. And that's where I want to uh, kind of move the conversation to next. Obviously you both do so, so many things with the limit breakers, but one of those things I found very interesting was on your social media, seeing things like streams, like fundraisers, things for pride, all these really cool things. A lot of it either is video games or music, and those things are intertwined with the band. So I kind of want to ask both of you, what is that earliest memory for video games and for music where it became such a passion that has led to this? Uh, and Jason, we'll start with we'll start with you and then Danny, if you want to go. But from a video game and a music standpoint, where did it kind of start? So the band is called The Limit Breakers. Uh the reason being is because my favorite JRPG of all time is Final Fantasy VII. Um, the Limit Break, uh, for those that don't know, is a move set in there where it's like a special attack that each character uses. And so uh, I thought, oh, hey, let me name my group the Limit Breakers. Um, and so uh, back in 1997, Young Young Jisoon uh, first got a copy of the uh of fs7 black label disc mind you like the original og uh and uh i popped that thing in um and i instantly fell in love with the game um the music is beautiful shouts shout outs to nobo um it's it's just wonderful like orchestrated music that um just really gets in your soul it, even that midi like still to this day gets gets me going it's it's such a good good soundtrack and and so that kind of like started my uh love of video game music um i didn't have this crazy idea to start a group until like four years ago because i i kind of was waiting for the opportunity to present itself to me um but i i've been in music since i was like 11 so like music has been a very integral part of my life and then loving the soundtracks as i was growing up uh totally it's been a journey yeah it's like you're never gonna see this coming mine was also final fantasy 7 <laughs> i'd Ooh. love i'd love to pull the old head card and say well, i listen to video game music nah. like i listened to the tunes like we all played zelda and stuff and mario right and, but that was just the the sounds you heard while you played like they're iconic but it really didn't um get into my soul until final fantasy seven because the sound chip was so much more advanced than the old snes days um there was a lot of emotion in it and that was the first soundtrack that i was really like man this is like this is hitting me this is really elevating my experience of playing the video game um and so that even stretches all the way um into like recent years like because you know final fantasy 7 remake uh in 2000 rebirth is next week i was gonna say y'all's <laughs> yeah. christmas is coming up yeah wild it's, it's wild <laughs> yeah it's crazy <laughs> but like hearing uh like i remember telling jisoon at one point they uh they redid a song called the air buster which is a a rearrangement of the the final fantasy 7 boss music and i describe it always as um what it sounded like to me when i was 10 years old um because you go back to listen to the songs you know from the playstation era and it's like she was saying it's those midi sounds those like really computerized um like not very authentic sounding things and then you hear it with like a full orchestra and a rock band just killing it and you're like oh this is what it sounded like when we were kids 
in our heads. And so I think music and video gaming is just such an integral part of my life. Um, we geek out all the time about <laughs> about stuff. We'll be like, oh, man, do you remember that one song from Donkey Kong Country 2? And, you know that's that's most of our text chains and like sending links and stuff to each other so and everybody in the band's like that um we all have those favorites me and g soon tend to enjoy the old head stuff a little bit more yeah that i mean that makes a lot of sense we all have the the game that's kind of defined our our video game journey you know obviously for me phil knows uh bioshock was a huge component for me uh, as far as a game, uh, Phil, what is that? What is that game for you? Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, it's definitely Pokemon Yellow. When I, especially when I'm when we're having this conversation about music, definitely those are the ones that stick out in my head. And then I went through like, like in my early years, I kind of went through like a, a a weird where I just played. First off, I had a PlayStation and my parents didn't buy me a memory card. So like every I had to start over everything I played. So I never really progressed that far in games and I was still active. So I played sports, which I can't do anymore. But back then when I could play sports, I was outside uh, now outside disgusts me. But <laughs> now that, uh, you know, um, much more into into gaming as I as I get along, um, you know, as I got older but yeah pokemon was definitely the one that that comes to mind when we're talking about um soundtracks and and um just bringing you back to a time where you know you just you you got under the covers you hid the game boy and hope that your parents didn't see the light shining underneath that blanket so yeah that's definitely what uh, what came to mind for me those melodies get in your head man yeah like, Pokemon's good game, pokemon mm -hmm. melodies especially a lot of those old game boy games they had to do so much with so little because the the chips just couldn't handle a lot of sounds at the same time so they had mm -hmm. to really really flex their like composing chops and that's why all those things are so catchy mm -hmm. the other one that comes to mind even though i i if i heard it i could remember i would va very very like i would very much remember it but i had a game gear i'm dating myself here i had a game gear and i had oh, yeah. echo and i had echo yeah. the dolphin and that's another one that that comes to mind as well so like those handhelds um maybe because they were like right in my face <laughs> so they're the ones that <laughs> really stick out oh and daytona 500 on the sec yeah. on the on the uh, sega saturn <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep None of the, none of what you just said can be real. There's, there's, there's I think you made all that up. Uh, but that's, the the Sonic game on the Game Gear was definitely a core memory. Yeah, for sure. That yeah, thing man, drained that was the a, battery so. I much. was going to say that was yeah. a hefty boy. <laughs> six was, six double A's every I, other hour. I literally had like a small briefcase to carry all the accessories. It was yeah. insane. I still have mine. It's the oh room. man! Oh my gosh! I yeah. We I had the Game Boy case that looks like a Game Boy. Like, <laughs> it looks like a big gray Game Boy, and it's got the big fake plastic buttons, and then you open it, and it's got all your stuff in it with the big um, the magnifying glass yeah, light thing. Yeah, I had the magnifying just... glass for the Game Gear, too. Yeah. That's, oh, man, we just unlocked a core memory. <laughs> For sure, has no it. idea what's happening. <laughs> no, no, I love it though. I love it. Uh, and again, that, that this is really the point of having uh, conversations like these. It's just it's so easy to get naturally into things that we enjoy. Is there anything that the two of you are enjoying now? So obviously, you know, you've got Final Fantasy and a lot of that content to look forward to. But just in the last, we'll say, a couple of years, you know, this year included, is there anything that's kind of caught your eye? You've seen a little bit of that inspiration from some of these older games that you've liked or have you pretty much kind of stuck with the classics i'd love to hear from both of you if there's anything that's really caught your eye and that could be from a music or video game standpoint oh absolutely 100 percent um dave the diver has been a fantastic game that um I think it dropped last year, beat it on stream. It, it has a wonderful ending. The music is very tranquil. Uh, some of it has like a little bit of upbeatness to it, but um, like that game really like has a lot of influences of like old style pixel art um, with like, like some new additions, like some 3d two. 2.5 d kind of features as well it's it's really sick so if you haven't played dave the diver recommend that 
Yeah, and Phil Phil might play it because there's going to be a Godzilla DLC, and he's a huge Godzilla. I saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in my Godzilla Renaissance era, so having That's a good That's amazing. Time. <laughs> um, I would say in the last several years, honestly, um, Octopath Traveler has been really high on my list. Uh, not only for like the old school JRPG vibes, but the music uh, composed by uh, the wonderful Yasunori Mish- uh, Nishiki. And uh, who also helped on the Final Fantasy VII um, remake and rebirth soundtracks. Um, I think he's like Square Enix's uh, hidden dark horse. Um, and this year, um, Sea of Stars. Is oh, like yeah, absolutely, I forgot about that one. Oh. Absolutely, like game of the year. Nails the Chrono Trigger vibes. The soundtrack um, composed by Eric brown believe um and he had help from yasun nori mitsuda who is um the composer for chrono trigger and chrono cross uh awesome awesome old square enix guy so um yeah i'd say those are like in the last year what i've been focusing the most on yeah and phil uh obviously for us it's been just more more recently pal world uh hell divers having a ton of fun in those realms. But I mean, even in the last couple of years, like uh, Sifu was a big one. I think we both really, really liked uh, just from multitude of standpoints. And it feels like gaming in general has been going pretty strong, but you know, not just gaming uh, is the theme for the limit breakers music, obviously equally, if not more a bigger part. So I'm kind of curious for both of you, uh, Danny, we'll throw it to you first this time. What is the creative process for you guys when it comes to making music and performing that music. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting elements that our audience would love to hear. Sure. Um, So yeah, (laughs) what we always talk about is the concept of like, oh, we are a rock band with a horn section and the music should be reflective of that. So the process generally is um, pick a song and (laughs) <laughs> the process is uh, for picking is not usually that complicated. I think it normally comes down to this song is rad. Um, and I think people would really enjoy listening to it. Um, <clears throat> so it basically starts with a, you know, a, um, a music editing software, open that up and then set it up and, and just start picking out the sounds or look at transcriptions and things like that of, of songs that are, you know, um, well-loved or the things that we like and then start to put a twist on it and sometimes especially with our band the twist is in the instruments that we play so um, for instance um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit I, I did a song from Sonic 2 recently and that song is like it's groovy, man. Like all those old sound, Sonic soundtracks are groovy, uh, but the the old sounds are just like little keyboard sound, little drum, little slap bass. You you throw the horns on top, and instantly it's like '70s Tower Power. Like it, it sounds really, really funky. And throw some distorted guitars on there, and baby, you got a stew going. Um, <laughs> so it's that's kind of how the process goes. Is we'll build up. Sometimes we'll have a core idea of like where we want it to go like hey let's do let's do those who fight from final fantasy 7 but make it prog metal you know um or like let's do um ring a bell from from tekken and and really rearrange it in a way that really talks to like the sadness of the character's themes and like the hope and the the glory that comes with victory and stuff like so that's kind of that's kind of how it goes and then we we start to like pick out um certain things that we want to focus on and and um and ways that we can change it up from the original in a way that just kind of feels like uniquely limit breakers and I got to say, like, Jisoon is actually incredible at, like, changing the feel of songs in a way that is just, like, um, really inspiring. Jay, do you want to talk a little bit? Sure. Um, you, you were, you, like, said it so beautifully. I don't know what else I could add to that. Um, first, thanks for, for the compliment. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you, 
you got to give yourself some credit too. You've written some bangers um, for the band for sure. (laughs) Um, So yeah, uh, I don't want to like go like music rocket brain level um, uh, analysis of, of the arranging process, but similar like for, for Danny, I, I always think of a concept first uh, to the arrangement and I, 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 me and Danny run it back and forth to between each other. Um, and so, uh, once we have decided like, yeah, let's do this, let's get on that. Uh, we just kind of go to town. Um, and whatever comes from that, the, the most important thing for us is always telling a story with what we're, we're doing with the way we arrange. We want the listener to, to go on a journey with us. Um, as if these arrangements were our own, we always give credit, of course, but as if these arrangements are our own originals, we want to tell the story and, and create an atmosphere where, where people will feel the emotion and, and what we're doing. And lately we've been writing a lot of emotional stuff. So <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting arc in, in the band's uh, lifespan right now. Yeah, I have a question because, you know, when you're talking about this creative process, I think when with any project, when there are quite a few people, I think sometimes you can run into a situation with too many cooks, right? Eric and I are a team of two and we're yeah. not always on the same page. You know? <laughs> no, we had so. to have a talk like <laughs> six months Late ago. Late last year. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we got to we got to fix something. So yeah. what is that like? How do you all? Um, when it comes to, you know, I'm sure everybody has different visions and um, styles and all that. How does that all come together into a, a cohesive sound? Oh, we absolutely do. Um, and we've like the band in the past has had its issues. Um, but we've had uh, our the, cup to Jesus moments. for Yeah. Sure. <laughs> with the current group, though, um, there's a few things that help us be very successful on staying together and collaborating as a cohesive unit one is uh first of all we're friends we 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 acknowledge that we're friends and that we're just doing this because we really love doing it uh secondly um we have set those boundaries of like hey if you have an issue come to that person directly and talk to talk it out um because there's nothing worse than people harboring like resentment for towards another individual for something that was said or done. So we have this like handle it at the lowest level. If it needs to be escalated, let's escalate it. Um, probably a little thing I got from the military there, but that's kind of like how I run the ship. Um, and then third, uh, I think, um, I think love, you know, we love each other. You know, it's, it's a big thing. Like we're big family. I, I call them my tribe because they are. Um, I couldn't imagine doing this thing that I'm doing without them. So I think above all, we we trust each other to be mature and um, lovable, yeah. capable, and approachable adults. <laughs> um, from, from, yeah. a, from a musical perspective, um, there are two primary cooks in the kitchen and that's the two of us um but something that has been very important to us is making sure that everybody's voices are heard um so one of my like big big like proud achievements that i have of last year is arranging uh lady maria of the astral clock tower from bloodborne uh and that came about literally because one of our 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 um players the our tenor saxophonist lucas is a just he's a huge souls born guy he just loves those games. And so I threw it to him. I was like, hey, uh, I think people really want to hear something from from Bloodborne or something. What what would be your pick? And he came back with Lady Maria. So I said, great, you know, and and that also goes a long way towards just keeping great goodwill in the band is we we do care and listen to each other with those things like i wrote a kingdom hearts song because there's people in the band who love kingdom hearts and i give them you know i aim to give them like shine in those songs like you write parts that are like hey you get a solo here and you're gonna you're gonna nail it because like this is yours and it it helps like foster ownership of the music and of the experience um and then also everybody in our in our group is an expert like professional level performer of their instrument um so sometimes there's things that 
I'm a guitarist primarily. I don't know all the intricacies of saxophones and crazy horn instruments and stuff. Um, so I throw that stuff to G soon and our, our trombonist, uh, Ethan and our other saxophonist, Anna, you know, like, Hey, is this realistic or is this something, is there something better you think could go here? And they'll give that feedback. And then that's how we kind of keep, instead of like the too many cooks approach is like, we incorporate seasoning from every cook instead of having them on over the fire so to speak you know yeah that's a great Uh, way to put it our um our drummer paul elevated a you know sorry quick anecdote um we did gerudo valley from zelda um last year before we went to vgm con because it was legend of zelda themed and the way i wrote it is like a fast like at tempo kind of salsa y number and uh it's supposed to be like latin rock sort of and it was a it was a real bear to play so eventually what we did was we slowed it down and i was like man this just doesn't feel right though um and Paul was like, can I try something? And then he laid down this nasty, like, uh, reggaeton, like, like beat with a tumbao. And that's, we've never played it any other way since. And it was an incredible suggestion that I would not have come up with, despite, like, growing up with salsa music. It was such a, sometimes you have those eureka moments, and that can only come when you have uh, everybody's voice in a, in a collective uh, equally heard. Yeah. And to quickly add to that, um, cause I had time to think, uh, <laughs> ego being checked at the door is a huge thing. Like everyone has a voice and in this group, we want people to be heard as Danny said, and there's no place for ego. Like ego destroys creativity. It, you know, that's my firm belief. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's all about teamwork and, and cooperation. And, and also being able to realize like, hey, you don't know everything. So uh, somebody has something useful to add. Yeah, I think all those ingredients are needed to get that musical epiphany, you know, to get that to actually happen. And it sounds like you guys run a great kitchen. Uh, it's probably the opposite of when we get in the kitchen and overcooked, uh, me and Phil, because that's usually a nightmare. So complete opposite <laughs> i was Love gonna say eric i don't that. i don't have any of those feelings towards you so we're in trouble <laughs> i heard a key thing and there was love i think we, we may have no. taken the wrong turn oh you guys no. love each other i can tell yeah <laughs> mm. uh, well taking that left at albuquerque probably. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but you know i definitely feel that as well like there are definitely some gives and takes uh you know even when we're running uh like panels me and phil will talk about like who's going to take which one who has similar interests when does it align sometimes it's simpler as in like hey do you need to go eat lunch i'll do this one so again sometimes it's like really intricate and then sometimes it's just sometimes it's i don't like jujitsu kaisen so you do it you didn't have to say that (laughs) you didn't have to say that (laughs) That oh hold on you soon clap for me I'm sorry. I'm I'm oh, no. just I have a hard time with modern animes. Like I tried yeah. to watch it. I did give it a chance. It's not my cup of tea. How many episodes did you watch? I watched about four. Okay, and see, I I, I, I watched really seventeen, <laughs> and Eric still is mad. She just says finished that the I first it, season, dude. That I did. <laughs> she says I didn't, didn't give it a shot, and I gave. I watched seven. Okay, so you gave it the solid five episode anime trial period, right? And more. Like it should. It should hook you in the first five, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. JJK is a slow burn, so <laughs> it. You gotta let him. You gotta let GG cook. I, I might. I might. I might try burn? to go back there. I do like that nah, one brother. guy. <laughs> I do like that one guy with the little tiny glasses, like, and he's tall, like with the anatomy. Yeah, him. I like yeah, that like the suit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's, I, he's I do rad. like him. Not me's cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, interesting. Uh, whenever me and Phil have to have anime conversations, because he is very, very picky. But JJK, I have given him some, some. Uh, I've given him some leeway. leeway on that, just because it is, it is a lot. Uh, there is a character problem. I think there's too many of them. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to understand the power scaling to a point you kind of just have to roll with it yeah Yeah. i enjoy it i think a lot of people have a disservice that they didn't get to see it prior to jjk zero i think if they had started with the movie 
I think it actually may have kind of gotten them slowly into it. Right. And then, you know, they do it. But that's just kind of JJK in general. It's going to be very controversial. Uh, But I'm curious. I'm curious. What are are there any like animes in general? Obviously, we talked a lot about games and music, but any animes in general that you guys kind of have that same maybe that Final Fantasy level anime. Is there something out there like that for either of you? (laughs) Yeah, um, I'm an old head when it comes to anime. Uh, so Gundam Wing is like my stuff. I mean, I think it's so funny now that I'm referring to Gundam Wing as an old head anime, but it basically is. It's ancient. I, I, I like <laughs> I like point. mecha yeah. animes. You know what I mean? Like so, like Macross, mm-hmm. Robotech, uh, yeah. Full Metal Panic. I'm I'm huge into mecha and like military uh, animes. Those are my those are my things. Yeah, mine is the the Venerable Cowboy Bebop. I could rewatch it at any Eric's point. Eric's fave. Yeah. Okay, you said that like really just dis- I said I had watched it for the first time in the last like two years. Mm-hmm. And I said I understand it's nice. Uh it sure. I don't know that it aged well for a new a new watcher. Hmm. But it's 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 good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry. Listen, oh, I've already oh, got no. into a, Listen, a fight okay, with a friend so, over this. So I'm Bebop sorry. Bebop is is um it, it can be a frustrating show because there are only slivers of backstory and sometimes the goofy stuff just kind of reigns uh, in certain episodes. And um, I understand that, you know, I, it's my level of don't tell the viewer anything and respect the viewer um, and let them kind of think about it because we don't get that enough in media. Now we get beat over the head with exposition and like power explanations. That was actually where um, my wife fell off of Jujutsu Kaisen was with Panda where he had had to explain his power seven freaking times. And she's like, I'm tired of this. I hate this. Can we go back to where like the people were exploding and stuff? (laughs) Um, But yeah, the, I'd say bebop, um, Yu Yu Hakusho is another god tier uh, old anime. Love uh, that recently, one. I'd say Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. More recently, yeah. it's ten years old at this point. Older, yeah. Um, but, That's a classic, though. Yeah, no, I, and I don't know that I've really heard anyone make a real argument as to not liking that show. And it's yeah. definitely top ten for me. I'm pretty sure it's like skirting top five, maybe in the top five. Um, definitely a great one. Mecha anime as well is definitely something I've kind of been getting into throughout my anime journey. So like Code Geass is definitely a top 10 for me. It's a good one. Um, I, I have a very soft spot for a show called Darling in the Franks, uh, which <laughs> starts, <Kyle> show. <laughs> starts very strong despite its uh, clear uh very Eric derogatory explained this issues. thing to me and I was like what it was like very early in his anime journey too like <laughs> we just he just started watching anime within like the last four or five years and he explained what was happening in this I was like Eric, what the hell are you watching like, what is, <laughs> yeah, dude, what it's, is it's like Pacific Rim except the girls bent over the whole time. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, and well again. Eric you never explained it as Pacific <laughs> Rim but this so there's two, oh, there's two pilots except they have to kind of <laughs> do suggestive <laughs> things to, yeah so they, they kind of have to do still have to be drift compatible or does yeah. it just <laughs> yeah is so it more suggestive than ghost in the shell though <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's it, it's it it goes off the rails is my issue with it uh but you know that that one holds a secret you know like special place in my heart and then the most recent one is my first gundam experience i've always loved it from afar but the witch from Mercury, fantastic really program. That is so one good. of the best Gundam series they've yeah. ever so made. So good, yeah. It definitely. Um, I think it it does get a little stale towards the end, but I enjoyed the journey so much I didn't even really care, and I right. really want to explore it some more. Uh, so, hesitant, but excited to do so, it. So when you say things went off the rails, this is a pet theory of mine. I call it the Japanese water theory. Um, because this happens so much in anime where it gets to a certain point and then stuff goes off the rails. Right. And this happens in like video games too, like final fantasies. There's always like, Hey, we're having this fun fantasy adventure. I saved a cat. Oh God, I'm killing God in space. Uh, (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's like, what you experience with darling in the Franks? It's just so common. Uh, Another uh, mecha anime that I really liked that did that was um, Erica seven. Oh, Um, yeah. Which was awesome until you find out that everybody is like 
a an alien coral or something and i'm just like this is the japanese water moment man like what what were they on when they wrote this it made sense until now <laughs> um like last exile is another uh, that's kind of an older anime but um yeah there's just a ton of examples you can just you're like what where did this come from what happened <laughs> yeah and, the, and the a lot of shows that, have that the yeah, thing that sure. comes to mind whenever you you have that theory there danny eric this is so recent but it was the random alien episode of mob psycho yeah. <laughs> It was like it, it definitely hurt. It, it I was like, definitely is this hurt the me. Same show? Did I? Yeah, right. Did I accidentally start something else, like a spinoff? Yeah, I was, I was very confused, and it, I get confused it, by anime very easily. So yeah. the fact so that I held me on, me too, me too. Yeah, the fact that I held on and it was, uh, it was a miracle. But yeah, but yeah, we're we're I'm I like to go and rewatch old anime a lot. I, I check out new stuff every so often. The remake of Urise Yatsura uh, has been really popular in the household um i've also been enjoying um well this isn't new but um madoka magica um as a magical girl thing because i grew up watching sailor moon so i have a soft spot for for magical girl stuff um and uh that one was a great subversive kind of deconstruction of a genre so it was a lot of fun um and oh gosh what besides jjk I'm still watching My Hero Academia. I'm not sure why. That's right. uh, the, Team My Hero. <laughs> the, yeah, Eric kind of likes My Hero. If you guys didn't notice that his wall is, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. like All Might threw up. No on his shame. Wall. Got a lot, no got shame. A lot going on I, I there. see that All Might back there, Phil. I have That's an All right. Might. No, it's okay. I also have. Oh, it's not up in here, but I have like a concerning amount of like big three artwork and i didn't realize that i was buying too much of it until like last year i was like why do i have so much deku totoro he has so much <laughs> and it's like they're all like different variations but they're all also kind of the same and i'm like i gotta i gotta stop by <laughs> i have bakugo yeah, right. on the back of my jeep like it's uh <laughs> listen it's a lot but yeah my hero my hero is great it's got great moments right uh, I, I will argue mm-hmm. that to till the end as a show cohesively there are some problems and some of it is also outside issues like with how the studio has handled stuff like they just announced another movie. So now I get yeah. to watch another season that isn't going to reach its full animation potential because they put all the money and time into another movie. Correct. And like, you know, uh, my the My Villain Academia arc is where mm-hmm. it pissed me off, I think, the most. So sure. I, it's definitely fallen off a bit. Uh, but I think when it's all said and done, I think it's just still too good to ignore. And we'll kind of see where that goes. But I don't know. Is it going to be looked at as one of the classics like 20 years from now? I- I'm not sure. I think it could. Uh, I, almost ironically, on the back of the music, uh, I think you say run is one the, of the most. Best OSTs. Yeah, it is one Maybe of the, the most. Um, poignant and like important shonen themes of all time i mean i've watched a, a youtube video of shaggy going super saiyan and it fit perfectly i've watched uh Pooh saved tigger in like the, the winnie the poo movie <laughs> and it fit to you say run when you write something like that that's that incredible and can go with everything you've nailed it um i actually managed i met the composer um for uh, MHA and Haikyuu and and all those. Uh, I went to Otakon a couple years ago, and they had a concert where they had like a small orchestra and the rock band. And he actually came out and played keyboards on "You Say Run." Um, and then we got to like do a meet and greet after. It was it was fantastic. He's a really cool guy. Um, also met the composer for Inuyasha. Did you guys ever watch Inuyasha? I loved Inuyasha. Yeah. I didn't know. I've seen oh, okay. it as a kid, but never like religiously. Yeah. It was like one. It was also like Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I watched mm-hmm. it to a certain point. Yeah. Inuyasha was like that for me. And I barely remember it. Yeah. Um, they have the composer for, for that out as well. And he's actually like a really, a really great, like classical composer. He came out and played with the orchestra. It was, it was a real, it was a core memory. Um, but yeah, Inuyasha is another show that gets away with a lot of stuff because the music's just too dang good, man. 
Well, we talked about this at um, at Brick City Anime Festival with a lot of our guests, or with a lot of the voice actors. Eric, I mean, anime I think is in its in its healthiest spot that it's ever been. It's more accessible than it has ever been. It has so many choices as far as people that are even casuals. I mean, we talk about this all the time. My daughter swore she would never find an anime that she likes. And while it has dipped in quality recently, even though I'm not all caught up, she loves Spy X Family. You know, there's something for everybody so um it's to yeah. get to be in the forefront when we get to do these conventions and like meet all these people uh you know just super grateful for that so yeah there's a reason we we keep anime tunes in the cycle in our set list like when we do cons and stuff people just love to hear them so so far we've done like departure from hunter hunter we've done a sailor moon medley uh we've done um the world from Death Note, like the first opening. We've done um, that, that probably from went really Attack hard. on Titan as well. Yeah, we're, we're next con we do, we'll bring the world back, and I'm actually going to do Smile Bomb from Yu Yu Hakusho coming up. So that we're we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good old time. <laughs> I gotta watch yeah. Death Note, man. Yeah, you really you should. should. It's, it's just excellent. one of those things I just put off because I know it's there. So mm-hmm. and like I, I'm being, I watch other stuff, so I need to I need to get on that. It's a short watch overall. That's worth it. Yeah. The Netflix movie, right? That's what I need to... I'm no. no. No, no, huh? no. No, no. <laughs> oh, oh. No, no. You don't get to do that. Start it's there. Good for, it, that's good for a laugh. <laughs> um, just like for Avatar, stop watching the animated. I'll just watch the, the movie. Let's not do that. Because <laughs> oh, okay. I'm three, like four episodes into the animated, and I'm like, this is great, but now I can just watch the movie. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. <laughs> like, wow. Hey, man, I'm going to give you the Vince McMahon. Like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but, my God. Well, yeah. before this goes off the rails, uh, Phil, was there any other questions you wanted to ask our guests before we uh, we kind of start to wrap up with a, a little bit of uh, a fun at the end of the episode here? No, I don't think so. We covered a, lo- a lot of great topics and, um, you know, just these always naturally flow to to other conversations and it's uh, it's great so no i'm ready for the game all right so uh we've got at least one game i think i might even fit another one with our conversation of anime i think it'd be uh really interesting so uh to watch phil struggle but we'll start with the game i had planned which is a uh, video game based game and we steal this like we steal many things from our fellow podcasters your friendly neighborhood gamers we're big fans of their show and they played this game with us it is called synonym roll and i have five characters (laughs) and five games and i am going to say the synonym allegedly because that's what google told me so if it's an antonym i don't want to be yelled at i searched it on google but I have the synonyms up and you just need to guess the character. Uh, it'll be first to do it. So it'll be the three of you. I'll host the game and we'll see who walks out victorious. So with that being said, our first character, it's first in a uh, synonym role, auditory, the urchin. Any it's guesses? a character? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Very good. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it is a character. It is Sonic the Hedgehog. We'll go all characters to start off. So we've got four more characters before we transition to games. Our next character is Stiff Constrictor. Solid Snake. That is Solid Snake. All right. <laughs> I did good on this part of the SAT. <laughs> Co- coming out to a lead here. All right. <laughs> This one, uh, next one, Protection Monarch. Would that be Noctis? No. Protection Monarch. I had a feeling this one might stump us a little bit. Phil, I'd be shocked if you get this. Protection Monarch. Huh. Shield Hero? No, that's not a bad no. guess, though. Okay. Uh, Shovel Knight. No. Also that's not. All, also, also not too bad. Protection what? Protection Monarch. Monarch. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm stumped on this. This one I can tell you is a character from a very popular fighting game. Armor King. It is Armor King <laughs> from Tekken. <laughs> oh my Armor god. Yeah, Come on. she definitely wasn't was. getting that. What? <laughs> I was like, I was, my first thought was King, and I was like, where's the protection come in? I completely forgot about Armor King. <laughs> that is great. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. A uh, noble apricot. Princess Peach. It is Princess Peach. That is correct. Man, we are not Katie, doing great, Jisoo. It is. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it Do you is want a team up? so far? <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> Phil. Seriously, Phil. Like my I own. Think... My I'm getting done in by my own teammate, <laughs> my own band member. I think I think the real question is, do you guys want to lose individually or as a team? Because that's yeah. what we're looking at right now. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Last character. Uh, sizable Patriarch. King DDD? No. Uh, Big Daddy. It is Big Daddy from the Bioshock. Oh, yeah. my God. I thought about the Bioshock. I was like, what did Eric <laughs> talk about earlier? Oh, Bioshock. There it is. That, that is it. That is it. All right. Well, listen, we can absolutely tie here. You've got five more, five games, so it's not <laughs> over. Uh, but, you know, it, it's kind of over. So we're going to now move <laughs> to five games to finish Citadel Roll. Uh, the first game. <laughs> Outstanding Impact Allies. Uh, Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> it is Super Come on! Smash Brothers. <laughs> Listen, I'm just All good right. at the music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I don't uh, think meta like this. <laughs> now, now, Danny uh, has pretty much won. Uh, so I'm going to put Danny on a five second timer to answer. All right. So the next one. Province Tickers. Time Splitters? No. Province Tickers. And Danny can jump in. Yeah, I gotta think about this. This one's gonna be interesting. World of Warcraft? Province? <laughs> like, world? No, not a bad guess, though. With world. not Not bad. Yeah, this one's a challenging one. So again, what error of gaming are we thinking? Tickers. Province Tickers. Can we this, get a hint? <laughs> yep. This is a classic game that has been brought up on this episode. Final Fantasy VII? No, not Final Fantasy VII. Pokemon. Not Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Dave the Diver? Nope. So province remember, tickers. it's a word, right? So province, another province. word that is similar to province, and then another word that is similar to tickers. To tickers, yep. Oh, okay. Now I'm understanding this game. <laughs> right. Um, this this um this game is also known for the music and its characters. My God. Sea of Stars. No. Focusing on province. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, I, I got I'm, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I feel so silly because you mentioned it that we we talked about it. <laughs> uh, another synonym for province uh, that would work here. Uh, let's say colony. Hell divers. No. You guys are going to be mad. Pal World? <laughs> no, you guys are no. Be mad. Now you're just guessing games that we talk about. I am. About. You're yeah. not even going yeah. for <laughs> Nah, I'm ready to throw in the towel. Yeah, me yeah, too. I don't know. All right, the answer is Kingdom Hearts. Oh, God. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Think that is, fly. Come on. Oh, that. Paul would that, have gotten that. <laughs> that was right. a tough ticker, L. Ticker Heart. Got it. Yep. Got it. That was okay. a tough L. Uh, the next one. Concluding illusion. 
Yeah, that's Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil gets it because I'm still on the timer. Yes, Woo! that's right. That's right. So yeah. Phil gets it. Uh, Phil and Jason. Bo- team. Team effort. Yeah, here. we're a team. Let's go. Right. Good job, Phil. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one is Protect Deuce. Protect? Protect Deuce. Deuce? Like a dump? <laughs> Like a poo? <laughs> Danny's back in. <laughs> Sorry, Phil got me. <laughs> so I think you know it. Damn it. Just, it. What is the synonym of deuce, Phil, please? That one's the gimme. Zeus? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of, pro- you said protect, right? Mm-hmm. That was the first one. The second word is deuce. Portal 2? No, but you've got one of the synonyms right. Ah, ah yeah, portal. The two. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that wasn't that much of a giveaway. Portal poo. <laughs> you know, see, I, wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to get us away from the poo. <laughs> Protect. Mm-hmm. Hell, no, not hell diver isn't. Protect. <laughs> <laughs> no. Although we are protecting... Super Earth. Protecting the galaxy and Super Earth. But yeah, yes. no, that's not uh, not it. I'm doing my part. Yeah, see, my I'm brain doesn't my work this way, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Another, another... Uh, another synonym, according to the internet, uh, would be guard. Yeah, that doesn't help. What kind of guard? <laughs> Can we get a, a, uh, a tip about the an game? An actual hint. Yeah, this is a game that people can play now. And people actively play online with their friends. Phil, we have played this game. Actually, uh, I know for a fact someone on the Limit Breakers has played it because you guys also posted about it. So everyone here probably, everybody here knows this game. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Um, Titanfall 2? Nope. That's not a thing. No, that's not protect. No. It is also... It's kind of like two words put into one. You wouldn't normally say this word. But if you think of guard, like think about what you would be doing. And that might help. I'm just going through every game we played with a two in it. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2? <laughs> no, yeah, not, not, not. I didn't know Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else was. Mega Man 2? This is a online multiplayer game that you oh, can play now. Mhm. I heard it recently had some updated uh, updates to like its characters too? and stuff. No. Battlefront no. All right. Hard. No. I'm you guys ready split to get in? Gate? No, that's no, not that's, that's not a two. There's no two in that. What am I all. talking about? <laughs> we barely played the first one. Uh <laughs> all right. Here we go. Another one you might get mad at. It is Overwatch 2. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Anna, where are you? Anna, where are you? It is Overwatch 2. So annoying. God, that game. All right. This is, the, this is the last synonym roll. This one is called Wallop Blade. And we're going to... Wallop gonna, Blade? Wallop Blade. <laughs> wallop Blade. All right. Danny said... I'm not even. I'm not even. Something sword. (laughs) Something uh, skyward sword. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I was unsure about the word wallop. (laughs) I'm not gonna lie to you. (laughs) So I may change that synonym. Um, Yeah, let's let's blade. I I didn't love that, but I'm gonna stick with blade. Do I have Um, sword right? No, you do not. Mm. Um. Let's say thrash, thrash blade, thrash blade. Well, you said it wasn't blade. You said it was thrash. It's thrash blade is the um, the synonym. The synonym, yeah. Oh, sword so, is not. Good. Oh, so okay, that's why I said sword. Yep. Okay, thrash blade. My gosh, these are so hard. These are harder than the characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this definitely this definitely took a turn. <laughs> Does it have yeah, knife right? in it? Is it knife? Is knife? <laughs> it is not knife. No. So it's not knife. It's not dagger. Oh no! What, what other kind of blades of, are there? <laughs> what type of game is it? 
It is a rhythm game. Hmm. Specifically, a VR rhythm game. Oh my god! Beat saber. Beat saber. Beat saber. <laughs> Beat saber. <laughs> Did you see my my hands go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah, why. What's the that? name of that game? I didn't love. I didn't love that. Because <laughs> that's how you play it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, some of those uh, hurt at the end, but. It did. It would. I gotta tell you, we were having a good time. I am side. deflated now. So, you, uh... <laughs> okay, Katie, I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> oh God! All right. Well, how about we end on a good note that I do have a uh, quick secondary game. Uh, we talked about anime, some of the classics, mm-hmm. some of the new ones, uh, but everything that we love with music. That means we have to talk about anime openings. So I have a top 10 list. It's really a top 20 list. We're only going to do the top 10 for best anime opening themes of all time ranked by CBR. So you do not have to necessarily name the song. I guess we'll say bonus points if you do, but I do want to know the animes that have it in the top 10. So whoever wants to guess first, we'll see who ends up with the most and I'll tell you where they were placed. I think Attack Tank. on Titan is, Cowboy is like three. <laughs> so, Phil, Attack on Titan is number one. Oh, okay. It is the first opening. Okay. And Tank from Cowboy Bebop is number six. Yu Yu Hakusho, Smile Bomb. bomb. <laughs> Which one? Yu Yu Hakusho, Smile Bomb. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is outside of the top ten. These These reviewers tripping. Who wrote they this are. article? CBR yeah, is notoriously like talk. wild. Yeah, yeah CBR, CBR has some crazy lists. And I should mention this was updated February 11th, so literally like two weeks ago. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, they're okay. Uh, wrong. Updated um, by Chelsea Steele. So yell at Chelsea. Her. I just want to talk. Um, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, the hero one punch man. The hero one punch man is number eight. Full Metal Alchemist. Again, by uh, in Full Metal Alchemist is number nine. Um, Very good. How about the Spy Family intro? I feel like people really love that. The Spy Family is not in the top ten. Not a bad guess. Did, did somebody say My Hero already? They not did yet. not, because <laughs> The Day is number ten for My Hero Academia. Okay. All right. How about... Um, what is it? Kitai Kitan from, oh yeah, Garenge from Demon Slayer. Surprisingly, no, it is not in the top 10, which is a shocker. Hmm. I'm going to take a guess and say Inuyasha. (laughs) No, not Inuyasha. They are outside of the top 10 as well. What do we have so far, Eric? We have one. Yep. You guys have one, One, six, six, eight, eight, nine, nine, and 10. Eight, nine, and 10. So we need the middle two through five. Yep, and Bro, then number who? seven. Oh, seven. Mm. And I'll tell you, out of the ones that are left, I would say they are all on the older side. One is an argument, but I would say all are on the older side now. Gundam okay. Wing. No, no Gundam Wing in the what? top ten. I'm going to go just based off of mainstream hype. Is Pokemon in there? Pokemon, the Pokemon theme is number five. Okay. Wow. Over tank? You're killing me. Over tank, yes. (laughs) It's unfortunate. I'm in hell. Oh, that's right. Um, Pokemon is an anime, technically. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, on that same... The rest are going to be obvious anime. Okay, okay. Naruto? I don't know. Does that have... I've never seen Naruto. Is that ever... No, people love Bluebird, but it is not here. Uh, How about uh, the songs from Bleach? Anything? No bleach. Okay. Oh, um, um Blue Exorcist. Then the the <laughs> Danny, uh, Jason. Anything you guys want to add here? I'm just not going to entertain that. <laughs> you said they're older, right? Yep. Sure. You like, oh man. When we say older, because some of our our idea of older is different, right? Yeah. No. What years are we talking? Piece? So. I would say I think the only one on here that I have to double check, and I'm pretty sure I can say this. Oh, that one did come out 
more recent. Okay. Well, so the old, the newest one came out in like 2014, okay. the newest one. But the other three are are fairly older, like Trigun pre 2000, I believe. Pre 2000. Is Trigun on there? Trigun is not on here. Did you uh, hear me I'll... say One Piece, Eric? I did not, which was a shock. Um, and I lied about pre-2000. There are some in the early 2000s. Okay. Yeah, no One Piece, which is unfortunate because we are as number one. Yeah. But it's fine. Um, Ghost in the Shell standalone complex? No, not Ghost in the Shell. Though, I will say two of the four that are up here, we have talked about on this episode. Wonderful. So no Gundam Wing, no Inuyasha, no... Do we say JJ? Oh, you Across. said older. Never mind. 2014. Jason, which one was that? Was that is is um, Macross on there? No, Macross is not on here. Is the Witch from Mercury on there? It is not. Although that is a Shame. banger. It's a banger. <laughs> it's a banger. No, these are all older. All older, uh, all older. than than Witch from Mercury. Yeah, sure. Um, wow. Ooh. Gosh, mm-hmm. this is hard. Is this, are these yeah. things that I would even know, Eric, or should I just chill? <laughs> you would, <laughs> you would. Everybody here would know these four shows by name. Yes. Okay. Uh, Death Note. The world. Death Note yep. is number four. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, literally talking about rocking that one out. I was surprised to see it yeah. last this long. Uh, Departure. Hunter Hunter. No, no Hunter Hunter. Mm. Not a bad guess though. Uh, Sailor um, Moon. No Sailor Moon. No, we have crack. we have number two, <laughs> number three, and number seven. Digimon still left on the board. No, <laughs> so if you don't want to play, just tell me you don't want to play. It's fine. You don't Dude. have to do that. <laughs> digital <laughs> monsters. You want me to help um, or not? <laughs> one of digital monsters. One of these are a very popular mecha anime. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, so. Voltron. Not Voltron. You said Code Geass? It is Code Geass. Uh, it is yep. in colors. Mm. And that is number seven. So now you have two and number three. Uh, mm. One of these two is also a mecha anime. And the other is the one that came out like 2014. So it's the more newer one out of the two. Gurren so Lagan? a very old ne- uh, mecha. Not Gurren Lagan. It's not a bad guess. Uh, Vivi. One's an older mecha. And then one is a newer anime, kind of in the horror horror space. Oh, never mind. A newer anime in the horror space. In the horror space? Yeah, and maybe mm. horror is maybe the wrong way to describe it, but it is kind of like a dark. It is a very dark anime. We'll say dark oh, thriller. Man. Um The Promise Neverland? I almost said that. No, that's a that's a great guess though. I'd say it's kind of in that spirit. <laughs> you said there's an old one in there too, right? On the list. Mm-hmm. Old classic mecha. This is one of the biggest meccas that anybody could name. That's not. <laughs> oh, or Code Geass. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Robotech. Cool Angel's Thesis. <laughs> yes. Neon uh, Genesis Evangelion. Evangelion. <laughs> so that is, uh, That's that the is number three. Yep. Made that up. I don't even that know what number, that is. <laughs> I did not. That is number three. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, it's a banger. That's a lit. Right. That's that's a, that's a legit one. That's it. Uh, the next one uh, is just number two left on the board. Um, again, this comes from an anime that everyone here would know the name of. Not sure if everyone has seen it, but it is probably like on list of anime like opening themes. It is. It is huge. Big O? No, it's no. newer. Newer. Oh, newer. Okay. We got yep. the old one. It was Evangelion. This, got um, this was the the opening song of the first season that came out in 2014. It was a 12 20... episode anime series. Mm. The hell is the... the name of that? It's not Blue Exorcist. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> um, Blue Crisis? No. The sequel um, season... The sequel season was highly criticized from straying away from the manga, and then the final season returned back to the manga, which confused a lot of viewers. I'm confused. 
Tokyo <laughs> Ghoul. It is Tokyo Ghoul Unravel. And that is our list here. And somehow I frustrated us more than the first one. So this was great. <laughs> this was awesome. <laughs> no, specifically my light watching fell Phil Square. And, uh, my light fell like it took the sound away for a minute. What was it? Tokyo <laughs> Ghoul? <laughs> yeah. Tokyo Ghoul, yes. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I thought show. you did that on purpose. I thought you just yeah. no. Fell. My light I just, it was just fell. Very dramatic. And then yeah. something happened, and and yeah, I couldn't hear everybody we for are. a little bit. Uh, well, no. Those were our games for Creator Spotlight. Thank you guys for entertaining us on that. And uh, I think Danny won both of them. I got by yeah. a landslide. <laughs> Didn't I get yeah. three? You said Blue Exorcist. I stopped listening. No, after I that. said Pokemon. I said Attack on Titan, and then then I get one more. That's two. That's 20%. Wait. Yeah. 40. <laughs> no, never mind. Eh, Continue. Eh. <laughs> well, with all that being said, 40%. It's 20%. <laughs> 20%. I'm going to stop mathing. You step into the ring with Samoa Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you got a 50% chance of winning. I'm, I'm... See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beating me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me and he's not even going to try. So, Samoa Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance and you got an eight and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. I'm not I a normal get, man. I get freaks nine days out of the week. There's only seven days. No, no, big pop a pop. I got freaks nine days out of the week. I can give them I was only yes. seven days in a week. Man, you ain't big pop. I'm the big bad booty daddy in the non-stop. Now listen, English. <laughs> but if you step in the ring with me. I got a 66% chance of winning. <laughs> so you take some of those 50% and you divide by my 66. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, in the video? Oh, in the video version? I'm totally cropping that. That I'm totally cropping <laughs> Steiner Math. Great. I'm That's definitely awesome. going to put Steiner Math in. Oh, my God. Yeah, Phil taking over the uh, editing has been entertaining, to say the least. Well, before this episode gets any more unhinged, I think this was an absolute success. This was so much fun. I want to thank both of you for uh, showing up tonight, being on the episode with us again, me and Phil have had a lot of fun with this series, getting to just build connections with people about stuff that we love. And it was just really overdue uh, once again for us to be able to connect in this way. And I'm sure it won't be the last time, Phil. Uh, I think of what did I miss our bonus episode? Would love to see the both of you and other members of the Limit Breakers come back on to discuss pop culture news. So we'll probably talk a little bit about that in the after show. With that being said, I know that the Limit Breakers are kind of taking a little bit of a break at the moment, but if I could ask you guys to plug just anything that you have upcoming or any goals that you have for 2024 that people that check out the Limit Breakers should know. Sure thing. Uh, we are uh, currently working on a secret EP. I will say that it involves uh, a certain young Hylian character in the Nintendo realm. Um, and that's all I will say um, as, as far as that's concerned. Um, but uh, we also have a bunch of tracks we're working on behind the scenes, uh, recording stuff. And we are working on a our very first full length album, um, which should be coming out sometime next year. So uh, the, the EP is coming out this summer though. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be real fun. And then uh, we should be returning to live music in a couple months. Yep. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with our stuff, check us out on uh, all the major streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, all that fun stuff. And uh, check us out on YouTube. We have an awesome video that uh, we made for Lavender Town from Pokemon Red and Blue. Um, so if you haven't checked that out so far, check that out. We also um, had our live performance with Mega Ran. Uh, recorded so that should be dropping on the youtube channel ungaku overdrive uh sometime in this next week 
Awesome. Absolutely love it. And we'll have a ton of the links that were just mentioned thrown into the show notes of this episode. Phil, in addition to their links, uh, please let our audience know, uh, especially if they're new coming from the Limit Breakers to listen to us, where they can find more of our content and we'll close this up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, G-Soon, it was so nice to uh, officially meet you and Danny. I'm glad our paths crossed yet again uh, in this uh, in, in a much cooler space uh, than, uh, <laughs> than the, the corporate world. So I uh, can't wait to see y'all and um, hang out with you guys at the, uh, um, the the various conventions that we cross paths at. We are planning on taking our uh, some of our cosplayer friends to Nakama for the first time uh, during Collective Con weekend. So um, if y'all are around, you know, we, the, the invitation is, is certainly there. Um, but for those of y'all that are checking out the uh, Wait For It podcast for the first time, uh, thank you so much for uh, checking out this episode. If you want to find the rest of our content, everything can be found in the Linktree link of the show notes. Um, you'll also find our social media pages, the most important ones to keep up with being Instagram, TikTok, and our growing Discord page. A couple ways you can support the show. One, you can head on over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, not only listen to the Limit Breakers, but also giving us five stars uh, and drive us up the charts. You can also share content, let everybody know that you're listening, let us know that you're listening. All of that goes a very very long way but if you find yourself wanting to perhaps um, you know support the show a little bit extra and get some extra perks eric will let you know how you can do that so for the podcast for every free community and thing that we offer like joining our discord we also have the option to take your funds and support us in a different way whether that's directly through our website or going through Patreon, where patrons like Stefan and Briar are helping support the show, and in exchange, getting early access behind the scenes looks at episodes just like this one. So with all that being said, we truly appreciate the support, whether it's a like, a comment, or even if you're going beyond. My name is Mr. Eric Almighty. That is my co-host, Phil the Filipino, and our guests from The Limit Breakers. Please don't forget, we release new episodes on the podcast every Wednesday, plus bonus content on platforms like TikTok, and all you got to do is wait for it. I heard you're looking for a go-to source for entertainment. Wait for it? Gaming? Wait for it? Anime? Plus Ultra! Mr. Eric Almighty and Phil the Filipino? Yeah, they've got you covered. And all you got to do is wait for it. This is the Wait For It Podcast.